This character is sort of in a state of paralysis. He's disconnected until he gets on a case that changes his life. Perry Mason, private investigator. Perry Mason is, I think, most famous in this country for that television show that was in the 50s and 60s. Our story is an origin story. It's much grittier than the Perry Mason that some people might remember. This is a guy who's not afraid to work in the gray areas of the law to achieve justice. You took evidence from a crime scene. You can lose your license for this. It gets our client off. When we first find Mason, he's working as a private investigator for a lawyer. A very large case falls into his lap. It's a kidnapping gone horribly wrong. And there is a kind of public frenzy about the search for the culprits. There's a real darkness bubbling underneath the storyline. And I find that LA, as a city, embodies that. 1930s Los Angeles was a bit of a mess. Everyone's doing some dirt. There's police corruption and violence. the depression here in LA, although it didn't feel the bite as hard as other places did, because you had the movie business. Hollywood was emerging at a rate no one could quite keep up with. It is the birth of Los Angeles, and we wanted to merge that historical moment with re-delivering this character for everybody. The first day of filming, I turned up on set, and I had a kind of breathless moment when I realized the scale at which they were going to shoot this thing. I always love the challenge of doing that, world building. You want the audience immersed in the period. One of the biggest challenges was being on location and trying to make it look like 1930s. There's a huge question mark, physically, logistically, how do we do this? One of our interesting locations was Angel's Flight. We ended up creating a virtual world around the train similar to what existed back in 1931. As a historian for the show, there were a lot of questions that came my way about settings, language, costumes. So being here on set, it really is a magical world. We tried to create our sets to look realistic. I usually start with a fabric or one key piece. It might be a desk. And from there, I just kind of build my set around that piece. We spend a lot of time collecting images, both for the cast and for the background, so that we could really get a true sense of what the city was like in the 1930s. We have an incredible crew and department heads and production. It takes an army to do this. Let's go, watch your points. Our art department recreated a large scale battlefield. The smoke, the mortars. It was pretty spectacular. There were times when we were doing the battle charges, you couldn't see a camera. All you could see were hundreds of men to your left and your right, and many, many days consequently, where we have 450 extras or 350 extras, all in period costume. Those moments where you go, oh, this is big. This is way beyond your run-of-the-mill crime story. I read the script and it was like, oh my God, I've got to be in this. It's not strictly about who done it. It's a show about characters. And I think that's what people should watch for. Order! My jaw is just on the floor watching these performances. They're so funny and playful and real. How about I have a look, you stay in the truck. Shut up. It's just so fun to drop right into this world. This cast is really an embarrassment of riches. It's just been a joy. This story is rich. It's emotional. I'm just about out of moods. You instantly can relate to this person, but the journey he goes on is of epic proportion. You said just about out of moods. It's not going to be your grandfather's Perry Mason. <laughs>